what the hell is this? This is a crab <laughs> with all the width and apparently a head. Wait a second. That is the weird, weirdest looking thing. That's why I don't like the ocean. It's still dropping new animals. Well, this is what happens when a crab never does leg day. It's just, <laughs> it's just all, all up here. What up, guys? I'm to hear more. And I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet. You're scary. Ooh, what it do? What's the genre of music today? <sighs> I'm kind of feeling like. Kind of like James Brownish, so like kind of okay. live instrumentation. Live. Okay. Hella ad libs. He was the king of ad libs. Ow. Yeah. Are right, you want to do vocals? I mean, if you're feeling James Brownish, I feel All right, like you gotta. Not? Do. All right, you gotta All do right. the instrumentation. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. Oh, you gotta do the James Brown counting. Okay. Okay. Here mm. we go. Here we go. Bobby, you ready? Yeah. Freddy, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Mm. Out. Come on! Let's go! Walked into the see my lady on the internet. Damn you crazy! Woo! I said you crazy! That's right, that's right! Give a massage! Her back was hairy! Surfing the internet, damn it, that you scary. Come on, Have to kiss the seven. Come on down, them stairs. Who up there? Who cares? Damn, internet. You scary. Woo! Have to kiss the You got to put the cape on me. Yeah. And I walk away. I immediately got what that was. The fetal position. You didn't do that One bad. One time, I, <laughs> I performed this James Brown for like this. Um, it was a dedication to the ones that came before us. I did it in college. I posted it a couple times on my Instagram. I'm going to post it again at the post this video. Mm -hmm. And um, I just did one song. And I think the song might have been like three and a half minutes, four minutes long. But I danced for three and a half, four minutes long like James Brown like this. Hardest working man in show business. It was, I was you were tired? exhausted. <laughs> and I almost killed myself. I almost slid off the stage because I tried to do what he was like, da, 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 and I slid. <laughs> but my pants are so slippery, I came right off the stage. You see it on my face, like, ah, oh, this is what death feels like. like <laughs> it was this face. <laughs> hey, well, uh, that's what they get for hiring James Brownie Mix. They're laughing at hope. They're not. They're not the brownie mix. You should have just said James Brownie. Like, I was like, I, I want to keep going. The mix was too far. Man. I want to keep going. No, nah, man. That's what my parents wanted I to do. I almost said James Fudge Brown, but I don't know. That would have been good, too. James ah, Fudge Brown damn, I doubted myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got, a, uh, we got a show today, man. The news Fire. is popping. Fire lineup, man. The news is popping today. But before we get into uh, things like Disney Plus Ooh, and, and, and all of that stuff, child. would you try a Twinkie cereal? I dabble. You think so? I dabble in it just to see. It's happening. You know what's crazy? Because I don't, I don't particularly care for Twinkies. I don't really do a whole right. lot of sweets at all. Like Twinkies is just way too much. But because it would be miniature, I think it would be tolerable. Just I'm because a, they're smaller? Yeah. I don't think Twinkies and milk would be good. I don't know who asked for this, but... People wash it down with milk, though. People wash it... Like, what? Well, you don't wash a Twinkie down with, Loki. like, soda yeah, that's true. or water. That would be trifling. <laughs> oh, my God. You imagine eating dressings <laughs> on Thanksgiving with just water. It's Ew, trifling. That's horrible. Is it, like... Does it look Check like it kicks? Or, I wonder, is it field, though? I don't like, know. Or like the inside food. field? I want to try it. It's worth a try. I hope it just doesn't taste like playing Captain Crunch. Because, like, that's what I imagine it's going to taste oh, like. Oh, no, I can if it has, like, I don't know. Are they going to be, I, I assume they're going to be, like, hard. Yeah, yeah like but still. Soft pieces. But I want something inside. I need, like, a marshmallow cream or something inside. It yeah, has yeah. to have something inside for it to be respected as a Twinkie cereal. It's uh, available in Walmart. Wait, <laughs> right right course, now? In uh, late December. I'm going to try it. You, I not, can tell by how you say, well, I, right now? <laughs> I got excited because I was like, I'm going to get it right after this. We should do. We should. We should definitely film us trying that. Yeah, we should. We should. We should grab it. Absolutely. I'm low key excited. Food gets me excited because, like, now, like, I mean, Christmas is cool. I don't really like celebrate the holidays like mm -hmm. that. But now, I'm really looking forward to December now. 
Because of the Twinkies. I'm not gonna lie it's to the you. Saddest though. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't like. I don't know who asked for this, but I'm yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try it. I don't I think. I wrote many letters. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all our Patreon subscribers, man. Yeah. We got a lot of great new content coming to you guys. Mm -hmm. For those that aren't subscribed, you're missing out on early content. You're also missing out on new releases of new content. Uh, thanks to everybody that already watched Lunchtime Lottery. Ooh. You get that like four days, five days early before everybody else, and they got it to know about it. And we're going to be uh, pushing some sweepstakes. I don't know. Well, not sweepstakes. I'll just say contests. I was about to say, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, sweepstakes. We got some contests coming from new merch and stuff for people, uh, new subscribers. So, yeah, man, we got a lot of things in the works. That's you guys about. are awesome. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. We really do appreciate you. Speaking of awesome, mm -hmm. we have reached the mecca of entertainment. Really? Streaming floors. Oh, yes. Disney yes. Plus just came out already 10 million subscribers and it's that was an old uh, article. Yes. It's probably more than that, but mm -hmm. it, it it just since it's launch a day later they got 10 million signups. Uh and now uh Netflix is trying to fight back. They just teamed up with Nickelodeon mm. to give us all the classics even oh, that's uh, new be episodes. Fire. So, yeah. If they bring back all the episodes of Double Dare uh, and what was that one? Camp Anawana? I never saw, uh, I never saw that. You never saw Camp Anawana? Uh -huh. I forget that you like 12. But uh, <laughs> Clarissa explains it all. Doug, Rugrats. All that. All of that? All Magellan's that. Castle? They just reached a deal to make uh, original series and movies based on its library of characters, as well as all new properties. Mm, I hope so, they better bring back the old stuff too, dog. They better bring back. Oh, yeah, back. it's all that. I want Doug. I want to hear that. Man, Rocket <laughs> Power, Cat Dog, uh, Angry Beavers, Ren and Stimpy, Our Real Monsters, Hey Ooh. Arnold, uh, Rocco's Modern Life, Invader Zim, SpongeBob. Uh, mm -hmm. I never watched the one with uh, Wild Thorn Thornberries, but that's in there. Yeah, I didn't watch that one either. Rugrats. It's all in there. That's awesome. They made all of those like cartoons look like they had like a filter on them. Like Rocco's Modern Life. Um, Rugrats, Doug, all of them looked like they had like a the same artist. Yeah, and like some weird filter, like it was kind of off a little bit. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, Ren and Stimpy was not a kid's cartoon. I didn't like Ren and Stimpy. The it was a little, was yeah, gross. it was a little weird. That, that got a little weird on that one. And our real monsters was kind of, it was kind of dark too. Was it? I mean, like the 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 coloration of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It like was literally, just, it was like, kinda, I mean. Hey Arnold lived in the projects. Like that. Now, he was darkness. really in the streets. He was in these streets with a skirt. If they, <laughs> if they did a reboot of Hey Arnold and he was like like Ghost from uh, I'm not Ghost but Tommy, Tommy from Power, I would not be surprised. He was really in the streets. Someone needs to it. make a dark Hey Arnold. That'd be tight. Yeah. And like, hey, that's Arnold. Like, <laughs> hey, hey Arnold. Just change the context. That would be fire. So have you signed up for Disney Plus? I did, and I'm going to tell y'all a little secret for those that don't know already. If you have Verizon and oh, yeah. you have an unlimited data plan, you actually get Disney Plus for free for a whole year. That's so unfair. I was at a audition yesterday, uh -huh. and I heard this dude talking. They, they were talking about Disney Plus. They were conversing, and he mentioned that. And he's like, yeah, if you got Verizon, you get to sign up for free. I was like, said, excuse what? me? What? You said what now? What? What? Say it again now? I was blown away. He told me how to do it. You go <laughs> sign into your account through the app, and then you go to add-ons. Click on add-ons. You scroll down, and you're going to see Disney+. Plus. You get to sign Jesus. up for a year at no additional cost to your original yeah. bill. And after that year, well, you're paying so much anyway. That is true. I'm not gonna lie. I pay over three hundred and fifty dollars a month for Verizon. Do you really? Yes, yeah, with three lines. Oh well, shit! Oh, and you get free six ninety nine. That's I how already, I get you, Verizon. I've already indulged in the Disney fanatic right now. Like I was watching Rookie I of the Year. Wait. You remember that movie? No. Oh, I didn't watch any sports it's so Disney movies. Young. It, it wasn't that. Like I, like. I wasn't turning on Miracle on in Lane Two or whatever that was. Like I didn't watch the sports movies. I watched like Brink and stuff like that. But if it was like, watch this young white boy uh, go into the NBA. So like, you didn't no. watch Sandlot? Nope. Rookie of the Year? Nope. Air Bud? Damn, I watched Air Bud. Yeah, you would watch Air Bud. It's a dog. That's the oh gimmick. Oh my god. The gimmick is a dog. You, it's not like some you magical. You didn't team. watch Sandlot, but you watch. Air Bud? I mean, it was a dog playing basketball. Oh it wasn't a, a, the story of a white hockey team you that needed are... to overcome. Overcome? First of all, don't you disrespect Mighty Ducks like that. I will slap I the locks. Yes. 
I was I watched Mighty Ducks, but I didn't get into it until it was a cartoon and they were all actual ducks. Oh, you shut up! I'm so sick of you. Yeah. Did you watch uh, Cool Runnings? Mm mm. You never watched Cool Runnings? Mm mm. Knew about it. Didn't. There care. are times I want to punch Pat in his <laughs> chest and just watch it fold up like a Bible. I like, love watching people get upset because I didn't do watch something. I like so mad. I didn't watch a movie or TV. You ever talk to somebody about <laughs> black cinema and they ain't watch none of them? They ain't watch uh, Love Jones, Boys in the Hood. You be like, you, you know you how never- many niggas I've told I didn't see Friday to see them get upset? <laughs> I was, I would, I'd be like, oh yeah, what's that from? What's that line from? They're like, it's from Friday. They're like, last Friday? Like, y'all were hanging out? He was like, no, the movie Friday. I will play it so straight. And they'll be like, you don't know what Friday is. My, bl- my blood is boiling right now, the fact that he's seen Air Bud and has that. not seen, like, <laughs> Rookie of the Year. I like, <laughs> just rip his fingertips back. I am so <laughs> infuriating with you. To be you. fair, when I get Disney+, Plus, which I am, because it's incredible, I am going to catch up on a lot of stuff that I didn't see. Because there's like, I was going through the classic Disney movies. There's a lot of stuff I Yo, didn't see. Oh, my God. The Rescue is Down Under, Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, all the dogs got the Oh, my God. And you get to pick your um, your profile picture, and they have all the Disney characters. Like you were excited about Oh, that. my God. I was fanning out on the Star Wars icons. Uh, at first, I picked uh, Thanos. Then okay. I changed it from Thanos to Darth Vader. Then I changed it from Darth Vader to, um, what's the one? Will the new, uh, no, uh, Babe. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the pig? They're both pigs. Kyle, Kyle Loren. I, I picked okay. that one. Yeah, that's what Are you a Star Wars fan? I am a huge Star Wars fan. Did you see the, uh, the new show? Oh, yes, yes. There's only one episode out right I heard now. it's good. Yeah. I'll be going to, like, to the premieres dressed up. In your house? No, at the, at the theaters. Oh, I thought you were like, Disney Plus. <laughs> oh, <man>. Got my tux. <laughs> no, I'm dressed up like characters. I do like oh, cosplay. Really? Yeah, I'm, I go all in. What was the last Star Wars movie that came out? Um, the Last Jedi. And you dressed up? Yeah. As who? Um, I dressed up as Darth Vader. Okay. And then the Solo movie came out as well. Uh-huh, Solo movie. And I dressed up for that one too. Lance? I mean, uh, Childish Gambino. Who do you play? Lando? <laughs> Land, Lance. Yes. Yeah, he played Lando. I, did, I <laughs> went as Darth Vader as well. I, did, I wasn't investing new money. Another, yeah, I'm not. To say, I got the costume. Yeah, I was spending a nice little grip on this one. <laughs> I was going to be Darth Vader for the next 16 Halloweens and the next 16 Star Wars movies. Yeah, absolutely. I can't believe how good it is. It's like literally like Netflix, but you don't have to like decide. Yeah, you know what I mean? and then they have it categorized too. They have it... By Disney, the and it has like all of the Disney movies and the classics mm-hmm. out of the vault. And then Pixar, it had Pixar, then it had Marvel, and then it had Nat Geo, which I didn't know about until yesterday. But I'm pretty psyched about the Nat Geo. Thing. I am okay. super. I am the biggest science nerd ever. <laughs> I will. I will be dressed Winnie the Pooh style, no pants and a t-shirt, watching <laughs> Beyond Borders and, and those, those, those Anthony. Oh my god, I love it. Blue Planet is the reason I don't like the ocean anymore because I'm so fascinated. I'm like, I'm never going in there. Really? Yeah. And then like Animal Planet, Green Planet, all those like yeah. uh, like the the docky style stuff. I'm, I'll chill. For I will like only go day. to Australia if I have an Iron Man shoot suit. That's oh, the only way that I can do it. It's pretty rough over there, bro. Everything camel tries spider. To eat you. Like big as the, if you see a spider this big in your house, oh, I, saw that. I will set my house on fire. That's, I will burn the block down. That's the spider that ate the uh, possum and went viral. Yo, right? God, that's the bro. grossest thing I've ever seen. It was. Imagine it was, walking in your vacation home because I think they were American, and there is a spider like it's literally this big eating a possum. It was like a pygmy possum that was a little smaller, but. That's what that's what they saw. They took a photo and it went viral. And now I have to find it. Damn it. That is <laughs> yes. Good. I finally found that picture of the dancing bear that I was talking about off of the uh, Archer oh, the show. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody hit me. I was like, "Is this what you're talking about?" And I searched this one. I was like, "No, it's this." I found the picture. Mm-hmm. I sent it to him. So I'll show you at the show. But you yeah. Gotta, is that was that in the Richie episode? Yeah, that, that was the Richie, Richie episode. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's already up, bro. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'll send it to you. You'll see what I'm talking about. Not that bad. <laughs> Yes, indeed. And uh, now I can. Uh, I need to sign up for Disney Plus so I can see uh, Captain Marvel. I've been slipping on that. You have never seen Captain never Marvel? Never seen Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Marvel probably was one of the most lackluster films. That's I mean, it I did what it was it. supposed to do in the box office. Still did a Billy. Uh, but yeah, it was one of the did more. A billion like, dollars? Yeah, it did a Billy. Yeah. 
the losses for Marvel, and they haven't had a lot for real. I think Guardians was one of the losses. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another one that was not. I think I think Guardians did like eight hundred something. Okay. Like a million. Yeah. But yeah, these movies are. And yeah, I think these are five hundred dollar, five hundred million dollar budget movies. Like. Oh yeah, they're gonna make that. Yeah, easy. They gonna make that easy. You know, like Batman versus Superman, it only made like eight hundred and seventy two million dollars. It didn't break it. No, it did not break it, and it cost four hundred million to make. And it made how much? Eight hundred and seventy two million. That's at least double. That's it's crazy double, that the flop is double. Yeah, I mean, but you gotta think about it. I don't know if that four hundred million encompasses like. Uh, advertising, billboards, promo, all of that type of stuff. Like it would have to, right? Or you mean four hundred dollars for the like, shooting budget? Yeah, I, that might just be the suit. Uh, I don't know if it yikes. encompasses all of that. I like Batman. <coughs> Superman. Did you? I didn't mind it. They were fighting. Like people were just like the storyline was weak. I was like the storyline was weak. His hey was flimsy. It well, was I a mean, piece of paper flimsy. If you think about it, how much do you have to stretch reality to make one comic book work? Like. And then you have to make some type of excuse to have them cross over. And, like, it's just, it but gets, Martha, it's muddy. But Martha. I don't know how no one noticed that they had the same um, name. That's weird. That is just, I thought that was, that was weak. Like, weren't that Batman a, and that Superman, was a like, weren't they drawn close to each other when they started? I, I don't, I feel like they were in the same office. Batman was always, like, aware of Superman because he, like, keeps eye on people. He's a creep. Yeah, that's true. But I'm just saying, like, when they were being made, created... Oh, I don't know. At DC, I feel like it, they were like a couple cubicles away. Like, why not? I don't know, man. I just, I just like those are the two biggest characters. That should have been a one point five billion dollar franchise, and they, they, Low key, they yeah, dropped, they dropped the entire ball on that one. Yeah, but true. it did have one of the best fight scenes. That's what in I'm saying. Any that was hero. dope. <laughs> like when Batman left, when he's like, "Oh, Martha," and then he went to that place and he was beating them dudes. Mm-hmm. Hands down, one of the best fight scenes. That's what I was like, oh, this is lit. Ever. Like but, damn about the scene before with Martha. I that's, wanted to see it. Batman versus Superman. They might as well just had them fight from the end credits, the beginning credits to the end credits. That would have been dope. That would have been dope. Just I would have dealt for that. <laughs> I'd be on for it then. And I liked um Affleck. I liked Affleck as Batman, really? though. Because you know what? He wasn't like the pretty boy pretentious one. Like, that's one of the things I felt like with Christian Bale. Like, if I found out like some bad stuff, like if I found out he was low-key racist or high-key racist, something like that. Nothing would surprise me about him. I think it's just his Christian smug Bale. face. Yeah, because like even when he was in Shaft, I don't know if you saw the Shaft, the first mm-hmm. Shaft with Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. and he hit the dude in the head with the pole. Yeah, and he was like, "Here you go, bro," or something like that. I was like, I feel like that might be him for real. It's funny, like you see an actor play all these different roles, and then occasionally you're like, "Wait, was that him?" Because like people like Denzel and Will, I feel like they're just themselves in, their, mm-hmm. in movies. But other people don't have that luxury. But then sometimes they have a role that's like, oh, I can just play this regular. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's done so many movies where you're like, I don't like this guy. Like American Psycho, uh-huh. and then uh, Shaft, and then like, even even then Batman, he was kind of a dick. Uh-huh. I mean, so I was just like, he was kinda. nothing would surprise me. About oh, they, should, they should be able to move tables. I own this place. Yeah. <laughs> God, you dick. <laughs> you rich dick. <laughs> the coolest thing he did was pull up at the restaurant in the Lamborghini in a two seater, and he had two chicks sharing a seat. That was that, that was, was pretty, I, that never, was I didn't play. even put that together. Yeah, I was like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's like a new <laughs> goal of mine. Because they ain't even they they came faster than seatbelt. He got these out, out here living reckless. They yeah, out here right. on edge. I have a two seater too, but it's not a Lambo, so it's like <laughs> it would just literally look like I couldn't afford an Uber. <laughs> Come on, just sit on her lap. <laughs> Come on, it's a dream of mine. That's true. <laughs> it's a dream of mine. <laughs> so and stupid. speaking of being a rich playboy and uh-huh. uh, you know showing up on the scene looking good and stuff, I heard you got some uh, like a little package of goodies and colognes I recently. I actually do. Let me reach into the bit. Shout out to the good people over at Hawthorne, man. Hawthorne. Uh, listen, man. I am. I am a grooming pervert when it comes to it man and i love looking nice i love smelling nice and shout out to hearthon they are uh, a grooming company they provide shampoo Mm -hmm. they provide conditioner um they also provide uh soap or body wash and cologne cologne is probably their hero Mm -hmm. item which just means like it's one of their best sellers but it's one of those things where like you got subscriptions to everything like clothes and cologne but Never like something where you get everything together. So 
first off, I think it's dope that they have a questionnaire that you fill out to like really personalize what mm-hmm. you're gonna order. Like I filled it out, like asked like, what do I typically do? What do I typically go? Do I prefer right. clubs over lounges or bars over clubs? All of that type of stuff. And based on all of these questions that they ask you, they create you a specific and personalized scent. You got one for work and you got one for play, okay? And these are phenomenal. I wear them everywhere. The work one I wear to gym because I don't have a job. I'm not mm. saying you're wearing the work one right now? Yeah. And then the play one I wear at night when I'm doing my shows. Yeah. It's so good, man. And you can subscribe and have like a subscription, become a member, and they send out the cologne. I mean, uh, um, the conditioner and the shampoo and the, and the soap, uh, however often you need it. Or you can do a one time purchase, you know. And I like that you have that option because a lot of times these places they want you to sign up and they'll give you like some weird day. Like you can cancel in 58 days before you charge your, your charge. Like 58 days? How am I going to remember? <laughs> you cancel in 37 <laughs> days or you'll be charged this. So the fact that they give you the option to like just try it one time before you sign up, I think it's super dope. So shout out to them for that. Shout out to Hawthorne, man. Make sure you check them out. Exactly. If you're interested dope. in this, you can go ahead and sign up and you can get our discount code right now. Mm-hmm. It's hawthorne.co backslash D-I-Y-S. I think they get what they get, 10% off? 10% off. 10% off your first name. Hawthorne.co, and that's Hawthorne with an E. And uh, yeah, check out the the packaging is dope. So check it out and smell nice. Anything that can keep him not from smelling like a pack of ribs uh, (laughs) is doing its thing. It okay. happened once, okay? And I had just <laughs> eaten two packs of ribs, so. <laughs> so shout out to Hawthorne uh, for, for hooking it up. Make sure for you guys sure, get for that sure. for, the, for the holidays. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the holidays, guess who's making a comeback af- at around January of next year? I can't wait to hear. Motorola Razor phones. Shut the entire fuck up. Really? I would have thought Sidekicks would come back first. I did think Sidekicks were going to come back, but I am pumped about this Razor. I'm not even going to... Yes. Yes. Let me see. Is it going to be touchscreen or is it just going to be like... It it is touchscreen. Oh, that's... I'm on it. Oh, I'm on it. You know why I'm on it? Because I've always hated bulky phones like that's why i appreciate the iphone for always staying slim and all like that uh-huh. and i always i never got the bigger one i never got the plus because i like my pants to fit how they're supposed to fit and i don't like having a lot of stuff in my pocket so the fact that the razor's coming back and it's touch screen there is no numbers right I mean, oh man i'm on it i might i might mess with this too and i've i've, I've been looking for something to kind of help me stay off my phone unless i'm posting something a phone? stay off <laughs> well i mean like get a phone because if it's a flip phone like it's not always open. So you like, I'm not seeing every notification. I'm not seeing every text. This I'm a missile. So fun. Yeah. And you get to hang up. And you really get to, this brings hanging up back. Because we've lost that for years. We haven't been able to like, uh, unless you got a house phone, you hanging up on people, then that's weird anyway. But like this brings that back. Like, I'm sick of this. It's over. I'm it's all like, in. I and it's on Verizon? I had one back in the day too. A razor? Yeah. Did the, you? The silver one. You was yeah, Brent? Um, no, I never had a chirp. I wanted a chirp though. No, chirp is next hell. Oh, Sprint, was it? Yeah, Sprint had the razors, I think. Well, maybe every company had No, the I had T Mobile. Okay, yeah, T Mobile had them too. Yeah, that was just. That like, camera's probably gonna be trash, so I'm not gonna lie to you. Ooh, that's big. It's 1500 too. Uh, the phone is 1500? <laughs> yeah. But if you think about it, it's a flip touchscreen, which is crazy. I like that idea. Wait, the phone is 1500? It's gonna retail at 1500. Motorola, if y'all want to send us some phones with that good old promo. Yeah, for real though. We'll advertise it. 1500 for the yeah. Blazer? How much is the iPhone now? Dude, the iPhone is 15 Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to have a good camera. It has it's to. It's better. It has to. It's better. I, just, I wish y'all could see this right now. Uh, Patrick has 5,000 unopened, unread emails. And 264 missed calls slash voicemails that he fair. has. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just. What are you doing? I'm not good at it. What I'm are you? You pervert. Why? Why is that a pervert? 5,000? The only person I've seen close to that is Tony Baker. He had like some astronomical number like that. I am lower. <laughs> I, I think it might have been around the same, but. Five thousand. It's I'm, literally forty-eight fifty-two. Anyone who has to deal with me knows I'm the worst texter, answerer. He is. Ever. I will text Pat 
and wait and text him again and wait. And I just had to call him like, motherfucker. Oh, we got the call. We got the call. Uh oh, yes. Hang on. Food is here. All right, so the next story that I got <laughs> is the worst story I've said in a long time. <laughs> you had to catch your breath a little bit? This is true. This is true. We we just got through filming Lunchtime Lottery. We we spliced the shows in between. And Ugh. Pat had something very spicy, so. It's, it's hard to have, yeah. It's hard to have what I just had to just keep going, but I'm going to truck through this. All right, so. It's a horrible story, and I'm glad we waited until after we ate. Yes. A woman in Los Angeles. Uh Uh-huh. It's the place we reside. This is true. Her life was changed forever when a homeless man decided to dump a steaming hot bucket of diarrhea on her face and head. Uh, This was in the summer. So it was hot. Uh, Her attack... Uh, she was, she would just, she was, this was on Hollywood Boulevard. She just finished up eating uh, Thai food with her friends. Ah, it's and already some smells. Her name's Heidi Van Tassel, right? So she already has some Pad Thai. Oh, my God. She said, uh, it was, it was, she, she was in her car about to leave and he came up and just poured it on her. She said it was diarrhea, hot liquid. I was soaked, and it was coming off my eyelashes and into my eyes. <gasps> Paramedics who came to treat me said there was so much of it on me, it looked like the man was saving it up for a month. First of all, let me just say this. He has to die. Dead. There is no way I can ever go throughout the rest of my life knowing that you are alive and well. You have, you have to die, Absolutely. Because if if you don't, every time I see you after that, we gotta fight again. It, it don't matter what what I'm doing. It'd be on the first date, the kissing, be like, hey, I had a great time. I had a great time. I had a great time throwing shit on you. Nah! And like, what'd you have that little sound? Because he's obviously not in his right mind if he's throwing Hell shit on no. people. What does thirty days plus worth of shit look like? Because even the paramedics were like, he must have been shitting three times a day for a month and saving it. She said there was it was all inside her car because oh. it was so much. He just kept pouring it and it's and it kept splattering all over him. And throw uh, the car away. Everything. Throw the body away. Secondly, it's hilarious that he saved it. Just to do that? Just to do he's that. He's crazy, but he's also still an asshole. Yeah. Like, eh, <laughs> dumb bitch. <laughs> this was on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh my god. And uh, dude's name was Jeer Blessings. Imagine getting shit poured on you by a nigga named Blessings. Like, here's the blessings you've been asking for. Blessings. And uh, he's out already. He had psychiatric testing. He was in for two months and he is back on the streets. So that's when your Dexter mentality comes in and you start cleaning up the people that the law system let through. Because (laughs) as soon as I heard, oh, is he back? Is he better? Hands, hands, feet, Bro, knives. that is My so messed up. She's gonna remember that for the rest of her life. And the, the more, the, the bigger thing is that she's always gonna associate Hollywood Boulevard with that. She will mm-hmm. never have a memory that is more lasting than that. <laughs> this That's, is not funny. This is not funny. But just to what you said, it says she got PTSD from it, um, and she's going through counseling. Oh yeah, because uh, she's left, and it said it. It was awful, and then she teared up in the interview and said, it changed my life. Oh, oh there's no way you can That's get a bucket crazy. of shit thrown on you and be okay. You can't be okay after that, because your mind is constantly wanting the answer as to why someone would do something like that, and there is no answer. There is no answer for that. He's just, he is just not in his right mind to I'm have so, done that. I feel so bad for her. Ugh. Oh. Her name was Heidi, so you know she was defenseless. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who does this shit? No pun intended. <laughs> it reminds me of like when uh, Kevin Hart was like, I don't want a homeless person to ever like touch my lip. Yeah. You get like the little homeless bump. <laughs> you got a bum bump. That is bump. way worse. Yo, my God. Absolutely. Absolute. Bro, I would take the hottest shower. I would have to go back to the hospital for third degree burns. You're never going to fully feel clean. 
Never. Imagine how many showers she took, and she's like, I still smell like homeless. Oh, the car, dude. Because, like, I've walked around downtown and watched, saw one homeless shit, and I was uh, like, that's the worst thing I've ever yeah. seen. If you multiply that times 30, and then maybe three or four times times that. Yo, let me tell you something. This is why you got to get rid of the car, because... You've wasted something in your car that you thought you cleaned up, and then mm-hmm. like a week, two weeks later, you go to grab something. Oh, it's still sticky. Oh, it must have still. Mm-hmm. So you didn't. Like, she's gonna be finding shit in that car for the rest of her life. I mean, until she leaves, leaves it. I think. Well, that's what I'm saying. She and, and, until she gets rid of the car, she's always gonna find remnants of that shit. The smell isn't gonna go right away. She's gonna reach down to grab a coin. And she's like, what is this crunchy? And then she's going to instantly think of that. Like, there will never be a time when she's looking for something where she won't find shit in that car. Ever. How long do you think it took to pour out? You think it was like a... Uh, <laughs> it depends she, by on the time she was finding how out, aggressive. It was just like subtle. And she was just like watching. <laughs> when it got to the end, was it like... <laughs> oh, the shake off? <laughs> and that one little piece is like... And, uh, oh! I think, what if he started another one that day? He's oh. like, all right. That's why he did it. He Chapter needed to empty. two. <laughs> <laughs> Talking like about a shit listen. star. That was a, a horrible story. We should try to see how many puns we can get off in 15 seconds with this. Well, shit got real. Ah, Didn't see that shit coming. <laughs> Those are probably going to be the two best ones. I don't know if I can do better than that. I was like thinking of like squirt. Diarrhea. Ah, oh, damn. He said that one. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that, was, that was good. That was a good quality one. That's the, that's the, worst, that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my Mr. Time. Blessings? Holy shit. Mr. Blessings. Your blessings have arrived. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was horrible. Speaking of slightly shitty situations, mm-hmm. I'm mm. so damn sick of talking about this Popeye sandwich. I'm not talking about it this episode. But we can't escape the chicken that is grabbing our media right now uh, because now KFC is in the headlines. Um, there is an extremely viral video going around. I just want to know your take on it. So mm-hmm. this is uh, this was uh, in KFC South Africa. Um, Are you proposing to KFC? Um, um, so here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. <laughs> Wait, let me let it finish. Was that it? Was that the gist of it? Oh, well, and you know, it does a little pan It's popping though. That, that KFC <laughs> I was going to say, you never, th- but I mean, I think he invited all his family. Oh, okay. Um, he could have let her get her hair done though. Shawty out there, <laughs> she out there wilding out. That video's everywhere. He clean shaving, bald hair. He's like, I know what I'm doing today. Bro, she just she, she it's, it's, it was laundry day for her. She got and she was like mid, you know, six piece. She was yeah, like, yeah. huh? And he started, oh, oh, um, oh, come on, why would you do that? So yeah, this was this is taking the internet by storm. I think mainly because it just doesn't really fit the typical. Because you know, Americans we do everything huge. We yeah. have all these crazy proposal videos, which we don't have to. And uh, you don't have to, but it's. Uh, I think the. Uh, that's why I, wanted, I just wanted to get your t- initial take on it. I, I listen. If you find somebody that you love that much, you ready to spend the rest of your life with it. I don't think it matter where you do it at, uh-huh. as long as you ain't got a hyping pile of diarrhea shit thrown on you mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. But also, we don't know the backstory. That could be their first place where they went on a date. That's right. So like that could be more meaningful than just it being a chicken place. That like that's the first place he laid eyes on her, or he fell mm-hmm. in love with her. Or that's where they first got together. So. We don't know the backstory to it, but I will say this though: KFC got some fire ass chicken. So. <laughs> so she had some good, uh, had like I a missed, good post proposal. Oh my meal. god, they were cheering <laughs> with strawberry parfaits. They used to do the strawberry parfait at KFC. Uh-huh. It was amazing to die for. That's why I wanted to get your initial reaction because obviously the main people were like KFC. It went viral because everyone was like, "This nigga performed at KFC, uh, proposed at KFC," and it was like. It's not like typically what you think you would do for a woman, but then it went viral for a whole other reason because now everybody is saying like these beautiful moments don't have to cost much. Yeah, never judge someone else's standard of living. This could be 
uh, to them the most perfect way Absolutely. to do it possibly. You know what I mean? Like, Not only that, like they got he proposed at KFC. They didn't get married at KFC. It right. ain't like they got dressed up and went over there at the cash register. It's mm-hmm. like, do you take her to buy your food for the rest <laughs> of your life? Like, do. it's a proposal, bro. Ring. <laughs> <laughs> People be proposing in jail. They be facing life sentences and be posing to ladies in jail behind a plate of glass. And you gonna shame this man for chaos? Nah, fuck that, man. Don't give him none of your bucket of chicken. Well, this is a random question. If you had, if you were like about to propose, and your only options were chicken joints, mm-hmm. would KFC be? Would you be like, I'll do KFC? I would do Chick Fil A probably. Chick Fil A? Yeah, I feel like the staff is gonna be excited. They're uh-huh. gonna be they like, if I can't get the seat. camera, man, I feel like like they'll go the extra mile to make sure it's remembered. Like oh, they'll, they'll hold the camera. Thing. Yeah, they'll plan the wedding. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you can't do a Popeyes right now. It's too much heat around Popeyes. Too much you heat. Can't, you can't do it there. Like, you don't want to go to churches either because churches floors ain't never clean. They I always like slippery. When was the last time you were in churches? Oh, a couple years ago, man. And now I, I think I went in just to use the bathroom. They were like, we don't have no public bathrooms. I was like, this place is shit, though. Because <laughs> they're used to people just coming in for that. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it ain't a whole lot of options, really. So it would have to be Chick-fil-A, man. They, um, well, that's smart because KFC actually reached out to them since. Um, they were, they, I think they were going to, like, hook them up. You might cater the wedding or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Weddings be expensive, man. People come, you understand, when you have a wedding, though, you basically paying for people to eat. Because they're going to charge you, on the reception, they're going to charge you a certain dollar amount uh-huh. per plate. So it's typically between 27 and like $60 per plate per person. So that's basically what you're paying for. Oh, wow. No, it said that the business did offer to pay for the couple's wedding. Honeymoon and gifts. Oh snap! So they won. That's the power of the internet, man. Because that free marketing for them. Mm-hmm. Like no other t- chicken place has really been talked about since the Popeye sandwich came back. Like right. none of them. Like not even Chick Fil A is really getting the accolades that they typically get. Mm-hmm. So that video, I think it just said three point five million views. They were like, "Thank you." Woo! We thought we were gonna have to start firing. <laughs> we people. didn't have to drop nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we don't know how to do a chicken sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> We sell the same buckets from the seventies, man. Um, but that's that's cool. I feel like this proposal was genuine love. Yeah. But I feel like now we're just gonna get a bunch of bullshit things happening at like restaurants, hoping that they'll do something. Yeah. Like, this. like I'm, I'm probably gonna do something pretty major in a in a Chick Fil A. Now that you said that, I'm gonna do something in the Apple Store in hopes that they just give me everything. Else. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm getting married at Best Buy. What you guys think? Come- <laughs> <laughs> Do a scavenger hunt for the target. ring. She finally finds the ring inside of that. I done went to every section of the store that I want something from. <laughs> no, I'm going to make sure some, I got some major plans going on. Oh, man. You don't even got to sponsor me. Just give me uh, a 90 second. What a that? It's typically like a three minute uh, shopping spree. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can go like you. Three like minutes? I, Man, I've, I feel like I've seen them typically between three and five. That's you just have to time. go. It's just not. But if you know the store, you just got to go grab everything and bring it back to the front. And everything you grab, you get to keep. I'm grabbing like two TVs, robbery. dragging them at the same time. All the iPads and iPhones. You think you'd have enough time, time to do that? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. If I, once they tell me I win, I'm going to start training that day for running with stuff in my hands. <laughs> I'm going to start training at 24-hour fitness, running on the treadmill with an air conditioner. Just, just hella like, robberies. <laughs> Yeah, 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 man. I don't need a whole lot of time. I wish they just let me run through and put a post it on everything and just say mine. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'd be kidded out. I'd get three of everything so I could sell two of them, sell one of them, and then afford rent in the place that I really want. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I need I need someone to propose to at Target <laughs> ASAP. Uh, <laughs> I was Target speaking of not work. being uh, properly trained. Uh, the interesting headline. So there was apparently a teacher mm-hmm. that was arrested because she threatened to shoot her students. Ooh. Uh, this not was okay. A, uh, I know, right? Uh, this was at Emerald Ridge High School in Pull Y'all Up. Pull Y'all Up. That is a city. Yeah. You've heard of that? No. I'm looking at it, though. Pull Y'all Up. Uh, Pull Y'all Up? 
pull y'all up. Hey, pull I don't y'all know. up. Uh, she was 50, 58 year old teacher, um, which is funnier. <laughs> it is. I know why the age made a difference, but it's like you think fifty eight, you like oh, she's supposed to be knitting somewhere. But I mean, it's not really. Fi- the, yeah, it's I not mean, that old though. But like, you just immediately, I was like, oh, man, her fixed income got her substitute. It says uh, the teacher's name and other information were not immediately released, mm. uh, but they said it wasn't. Cl- it's not clear exactly what led up to the threats, which means the students are lying. Because mm. uh, I've seen students literally. There, there was a substitute teacher at my high school that was literally brought to te- tears, and he was a, a full grown man. Mm. Uh, I know how kid, I know how kids can be. Yeah. Uh, but they said if a kid makes those kind of statements, they end up going to jail and they have to pay the price for it. Uh, if a teacher makes them, uh, it's a it, they ha- that's a bad example and they have to be held account- accountable just as well. Mm-hmm. So um, it was in a, the most professional setting and it was overheard by caseworkers and others re- who reported it to school officials. Mm. So I guess the kids didn't snitch. Yeah, um, that's crazy. I w- I've been a substitute teacher. For seventh grade science, and I know the frustration that that lady felt to make her scream that out. I've never said it myself, but I definitely thought to myself, mm-hmm. "I'm gonna catch this little fucker right after school, and I'm gonna you show." You said him it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I just said it to myself. I'm gonna Good. catch this little fucker, but I ended up not she got doing book. it. I, I never, I never like put my hands on a kid. Uh, what I found was actually the best of revenge was to just start fucking their moms. Have you done that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If any of my students are watching right now, my past students, I definitely fuck some of your friends' moms. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they didn't tell none of their friends because, like, you talked all that shit in class and you came home, you see my feet on your coffee table. They didn't tell? No, they ain't going to tell their friends. They don't want their friends to know that Mr. Moore's fucking their mom. How do they know? I, they come home and they see me. I don't try to hide. I don't try to hide. So they know that that's their mom. Then. The kid would know. Oh, but they wouldn't tell their friends. They wouldn't tell their friends because they don't want their friends to know. That so you literally up. had a kid that you didn't like walk into the room and you were just like, what's up? After I fucked his mom? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And then what did they say? What are you, what are you, what are you doing here, Mr. Mom? Do you, tell the, do you tell the truth? I don't have a shirt on. Huh? I don't have a shirt on. They know what's going on. What'd you say? What, what, if you walk in your house and it's just you and your mom that stay there and mm-hmm. now I'm sitting in your couch... Well, my feet on your coffee table, and I ain't got no shirt on. You in the seventh grade? What would you think was going on? Oh, I know I would, what I would think. I'm yeah. asking what was said because that's such a bizarre oh, scenario. Yeah. Well, the kids said, "What are you doing here?" And I was like, "I was talking to your mom." Where's your shirt? Your mom's room. And he screams and went, screamed and then went to look for his mom. His mom brought my shirt in. Is like, I didn't know he's coming. Maybe you should go. Hey, all right, I'll leave. And the kid is saying what the whole time? I can't fucking believe he's cussing his ass off. I can't fucking believe you do this shit. To you or her? <laughs> to her. You better, not see, you better not talk to me like that. I'll come back over tomorrow, motherfucker. <laughs> so what's the next day at school like? He didn't come the next day. Are you serious? He did not come the next day. He came the next day. I think they have it on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. He came, he came that Friday or that Thursday. He came back. And he didn't say shit else to me in the class, though. He didn't want me to put that business out there. Damn. And this was somebody who was like actively fucking with you? No, it's just just loud disruptive. Just he's a he disrupted learning environment. So I I disrupted his living environment. Yeah, that's not enough to fuck someone's mom. I thought he was like, yeah, Mr. Moore, you dumb teacher, throwing stuff. Like Why is that not enough? Huh? Why is that not enough? If you're disrupting the, the learning environment, I constantly gotta tell you to sit down. I gotta tell you, constantly tell you, you gotta be quiet. You're walking around the room. You never have your work. You're not that to to to. So work. after that, they were more responsible. No, he was still a little dick, but you know. Wow. Yeah. It was I, three three parents I smashed. I'm glad I never had to deal with that as a kid. <laughs> Cause I fuck your mama. <laughs> My dad beat your ass. <laughs> Nah, I'm not fucking with the guy that had dads. <laughs> Only the single mom. That's, that was my, that was my prey. <laughs> That's wild as hell. Uh, speaking of wild as hell and uh, bad parents, <laughs> that's a good transition. Thinking of weirdo parents. Oh, this story pissed me off. Woo, so bad. This is a bad one. Yeah, this is this this the guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's, okay. That's a face that would do let's, something. Let's like get this. right into this one because I'm sick of this shit. So this happened in Philly. Uh, this was the uh, the father of an 11 month year old boy uh, was shot four times in Philadelphia. And when I say that, I do not mean the father was shot. I mean the child was shot. And that is because 
This man, his name is Yassim Mooner Jenkins, uh, was shot at four times, um, and he used his baby as a human shield. 11-month-old baby as a human shield. Um, you, he, y'all, you see this picture. You can't have tattoos on your face and then run it from that, that, that life like that. But running from that life and using your child as a shield? Oh. It's pretty messed up because um, Despicable. It's, it's not even like shots rang out in a public place and he just did that. Like mm -hmm. He was basically using counterfeit money to buy drugs. Uh, so he would do that. And then when they realized that when the drug dealers realized that they would want to get him back. So he would purposely move with his son to like thwart that off. And when they pulled up and they didn't care, they shot him, hit him in the car. And uh, it, it, they're doing an investigation that led us to believe that he intentionally had his child with him when he was making these purchases. Um, and they were he was just hoping they wouldn't fire upon him. And when they did, he... Uh, he put he put his kid in front of him and he and uh, Yassim Muner Jenkins that's the kid's name. Um, yeah, his name is Nafis. Yeah, the dad's name is Nafis Monroe. Um, but uh, that's re that's really bad. Like he got the the kid got hit in the, the head um, in a couple of other places. I think he was hit four times. They um, are going to destroy that boy in jail. I hope so. Like, I worked in the jail. I was also a teacher in the jail. I won't fuck nobody mom in the jail. Yeah. Whatever, <laughs> Smart. whatever the fuck they did to get there, I don't want to <laughs> find out if they really did it or right, not. Right. But one thing in the jail is they don't, they don't take lightly to pedophiles. And they don't take lightly to people who intentionally hurt children. Mm -hmm. And he is going to have a very rough time in jail. God, that, much, that much I can tell you. The mom's statement is so sad. She's just like, it's not fair. He's so innocent, so precious. How could anyone be so heartless? It's a really, really horrible thing. And, uh, yeah, it was just, that's, that's just like. So the baby's really still alive because it says my, my son is fighting for his life at the bottom. Um, is this an old, uh, this is Tuesday. So I want to say I read one where he was killed, but um, is that the bottom right here? Look, look, let's see what it says. No, that's something. what I'm saying. This was an old, uh, oh, older okay. article. Um, but yeah, here let's 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 find out. Let's see what the most. Oh one. God, that, that hurts is, my heart. That's such a, that's such a dick move. Like, I can't I can't believe <sighs> the mindset of some people just baffles me. Like that is. Scary to think that there are people walking around like that that think that's okay to do something like that. Okay, it doesn't seem like uh, it doesn't seem like he's uh, dead. He, I think he might be in critical condi condition. Uh, but one of the shot, he was hit four times and one was in the head. So pray for. Yeah, it says critical condition. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Care. Pray man. for you, see him. That's terrible. A human shield? Yeah, he is not gonna have a good time in jail. Not at all. No, that's not. And as he shouldn't. I mean, look at this nigga's hair, though. He got a Nike tattoo on his face. I didn't take you seriously. I can't take you seriously. Of course he had counterfeit money. Look at that tattoo. It's a counterfeit tattoo. Right. <laughs> Not even a real swoosh. It's a counterfeit beard. Counterfeit. Oh, that beard is trash, man. <laughs> yeah, that beard is every out. part of trash. It's the lid. It's the receptacle. All of it. Bag, it is trash. Fuck that guy. Fuck yeah, that man. guy. And, you know... I hope not Charlemagne gave that, him the duck the other day. I know, right? But not, that's not to say that the drug dealers weren't some assholes, too. Oh, absolutely. The, his, I think the, the mom was in the... Um, not the mom. The stepmom was in this car, too. And, and the kid. And wow. They still let off. They weren't, they weren't trying to hear that. Wow. Which is ass. All right, so really <laughs> quick, uh, really quick segment just to uh, shake that off before the Man. conspiracy. Yes, because that is... This is a, a new segment that I'm going to try. A quick one called, What is This? Okay, and here it is. I'll show you guys too. What the hell is this? This is a crab <laughs> with all the width and apparently a head. Wait a second. That is the weird, weirdest looking thing. That's why I don't like the ocean. It's still dropping new animals. Well, this is what happened when a crab never does leg day. It's just, <laughs> it's just all, all up 
here. He got the Hulk Hogan on. Yeah, brother. Oh boy, we see him with the claps. He was like, yeah, bro. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't know you were going to get that part. I don't like the hit. I know, right? My my one blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't turn my head. I can't, I can't my reach head. that. <laughs> what is that? Like, what kind of crab is that? I've never. Is they, are they saying it's a new species? I, I could not say that. It might my tongue been. just had a stroke <laughs> mid sentence. My tongue was like, <laughs> It looks like a boss in the old video game, low key. <laughs> That's awful. That is that is not okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Ugh. Ugh. now that we done shook off the bad stuff. Bad juju. Let's get right into the conspiracy corner. That was a lot more. You uh, dragged that out so long. I didn't, I didn't that think was, it was going to go. It was a lot more uh, like <laughs> syllables, syllables than, than that. you expected. <laughs> All right, well, this is the conspiracy <laughs> corner for the day. It is called Dimensional Jumpers. Cue the conspiracy music. We haven't done that in a while. There are some people that are called dimensional jumpers and they go in back in time and they go forward in time. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, but where are they? They in other dimensions. Oh, dimensions, dimensions. Where you at? I'm in another dimension. Oh, oh we had a little I gotta skip. drop the little, little skip. Yeah, <laughs> Somebody hit the speaker. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Nick Hinton on Twitter. He's one of my favorite people that I follow. Um, this is uh, this is this is from his POV. Basically, he discovered uh, a weird but unique group of people on the internet that are called dimensional jumpers, and they really believe that they can jump from uh, parallel universe to parallel universe. So. They say that all it takes to travel to a parallel universe is a strong will and intense concentration. So it's more of a spiritual thing. So when I uh, found out these people, it was odd timing. Uh, so basically, someone had just messaged him and telling, told him that his Saturn research reminded them of a television show called The OA. And if you're not familiar with The OA, um, it's about a girl who travels between dimensions. So... Uh, there's basically a, a dance called the five movements. Uh, and it's basically what they use to make them reach like a transcend, transcendental state. Uh, it's like these hand gestures. It almost looks like sign language a little bit. They throwing up sense. Uh, right. And uh, it was almost like the Hindu and Buddhist uh, mudras. They're like hand gest gestures that are meant to channel spiritual energy and bend reality. So... Um, and ironically, remember we talked about the cube. Uh, another way the characters travel between multiverses is using these black cubes. Uh, so there's like a, a connection between the two. So um, basically, uh, there's an episode of the show where a scientist captures a dimensional jumper and experiments on her. Uh, and then there's uh, an episode. This where, is OA. OA. This okay, is OA. Not yeah. in real life. Okay. No, it's in OA. And then after forcing her to have a near-death experience, he listens to recordings of the sounds she heard while in the afterlife and it's radio emissions coming from Saturn. So it's like, what? what? That makes no sense. Um, and uh, there's also, this side note, there's this famous conspiracy theorist who died under um, mysterious uh, circumstances. His name is Max Spears, or Spire, excuse me. He was once quoted saying that Saturn is part of a soul-trapping machine that erases our memories before we reincarnate. So apparently, like, we visit them right when we die. It erases our memories, and then we, we we're sent back. Now how um, does this nigga know? I don't know, but he died by puking up black vomit. That's that don't sound safe. That's mysterious. Um, but he believed that aliens built Saturn's rings with the intent of trapping its lowest frequencies and then redirected them at Earth. So, uh, and there's an ex-NASA scientist that actually wrote a book called Ringmakers of Saturn, where he shows uh, supposed photographic evidence of this. So this is an infrared photograph of one of the gigantic uh, uh, cylindrical uh, rings. Mm -hmm. And there's this weird uh, object right, that, taken yeah. by the Hubble that's just kind of like pulled up next to it. I'm sure there's more evidence than that, but... Um, so there's, an, uh, there's another point in the OA where a detective is investigating a new app that's causing kids to go missing. It's an augmented reality game, kind of like that Pokemon Go one. Mm -hmm. And it leads you to crossroads between dimensions. Uh, the crossroads is an upside-down abandoned house 
and um, it has a famous poem written on the walls. We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. That's a, that was by T.S. Eliot. I'm gonna say that again. We shall not cease from exploration mm -hmm. and the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. So I guess that's reincarnation. Mm. Um, I'll get home completely drunk. <laughs> You're like, that shit left for me, but I don't know none of this shit. So we say all that to say um, there was an article that's similar to this. This is the connection between the OA. Uh, it was described as being able to help somebody jump dimensions and hack the matrix. So um, basically, when they found uh, in this article, they said that they've uh, experienced a lot of strange things. Uh, uh, apparently, a lot of once you start researching this, a lot of re weird things in your your life happens. Like Nick, who researched this, said that the next morning his religion professor read that exact same T. S. Eliot poem uh, at the beginning of class, and then he was just like, "Oh, something something happened." Right. Um, so, how does this app make you help you jump dimensions? It says the app uses a quantum random number generator to create locations on a map. And then you're then expected to travel to that location. So it's kind of like that other thing that we were talking about, the random mm -hmm. location simulator. Um, but so quantum randomness, you have to kind of know what that is. In uh, uh, quantum in quantum physics, a quantum particle, which is smaller than an atom, mm -hmm. can exist in more than one state at one time. This is known as superposition. So it can somehow act as both a particle and a wave simultaneously. Um, and so this is kind of like, remember when we were talking about quantum uh, computers that yeah. exist and they get information, how it can be a zero, a one, or both? Both, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like getting, in, getting used to superposition. So a particle only collapses into one state or another once it's observed. In the quantum world, things get weird and partic particles blip in and out of existence all the time. That's weird as hell. Um, this is, yeah, it just exists and then doesn't exist in, in, in that world. Uh, so they say that these numbers are like truly random. Shows. You say what? So like my car <laughs> Uh They say the numbers are truly random because <laughs> in our world of normally sized objects, uh, everything is predetermined. So everything is cause and effect and can be boiled down to an equation. Mm -hmm. um, but because of this reason, a random reg uh, a ran a regular random number generator is not truly random. It can be affected by small things as the air pressure in the room or the last number it landed on. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's all these outside effects that can, ha that can even like change it. So basically that means mostly everything you do is the result of your past, your environment, the people around you, the subconscious thoughts, uh, and your subconscious thoughts, patterns, and habits. If you walk, you walk a narrow line without realizing it. Um, but this app allows you to branch off into another path uh, one you would never normally go down. So basically everything you're doing is somewhat predetermined and this app can let you... Really uh, go random. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the founder of this app is, uh, calls these paths probability tunnels. And each probability tunnel is like an alternate timeline or dimension. Mm -hmm. So these people who go out and explore the random corners of reality call themselves randonauts, which is uh, deeper. And I think we touched on randonauts yeah. in another one. Uh, and interestingly enough, the Randonauts chose the owl as the logo. The Drake um, fans. Drake. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, coincidentally, the Dimensional Jumpers group, um, uh, basically, uh, they have a group called the, um, or an experiment called the Owl Experiment. And they report weird glitches in the matrix, um, things like phones turning off, cars not starting, bad weather, friends telling you to turn around. <laughs> it's a random thing like turn around uh when i first experienced this it reminded me of the truman show mm. uh, so it's, i guess it's kind of like once he started reading about it everything changed where it made him seem like he was the star of the show that the, the, the right. poems started coming up like all these things started happening and he almost started to feel like jim carrey in the truman show which was all being directed outside um but yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. There's like a, a, a group of people that are apparently using this app to sort of like uh, jump around. And live their life, literally based off of this app. This you app, said what? Live their life, literally based off this app. Making right, lefts, and all of that based off of this app. Mm-hmm. Uh, nope. 
Quantum immortality. <laughs> nope, not a thing. I'm not gonna go over that. You're my not thing going is like jumpers. My thing is like people always have these theories, and nobody ever has footage of nobody jumping to these places and coming back. No, like I go, go to Saturn and bring me back a package of ke- package of ketchup. Let me see what it look like on Saturn. If you can't do that, I'm not buying that shit, bro. Like I I I'll take well, that's your the theories. Thing. It says that quantum particles only become solid or fixed once they're observed. So uh, they realize that they, as long as they're being watched by the game master or the person that is planning this, they can never win or do these things, which is <sighs> convenient. <laughs> That's going to be an excuse. I know, right? <laughs> I ain't buying it. Whatever you're selling, I ain't picking it up. Dang. So there's like a quantum Zeno effect where atoms won't change if one takes continuous measurements which is kind of like a watched pot never boils. Right. That kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it's almost like um, you, if the game master is watching, you can't, uh, it, 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 all, it can't happen. Um, so, but if they stop watching, it gives you a chance to change your situation. So uh, it's almost like there's all these cameras around us, including our own phones. Um, what about people in jail? Because at the beginning of the thing, you said, like, you can only quantum jump. It requires extreme focus and, like, dedication. For somebody that turned their life in jail, mm-hmm. and they in their cell, locked up 23 hours a day, and they're trying to read or whatever, they're meditating, they're praying. That's all they have to do is focus and pray and meditate. They would be somewhere else. So why it ain't working for them? So they, mm-hmm. they ain't being watched. They're being watched too much. Oh, pish posh. Well, it's, it says that there's like a part of it called ter- uh, Tesseract Magic, which is a ritual that is, uh, makes you um, jump dimensions, but mm-hmm. it was deemed too powerful for the untrained to use. It's been deleted from the internet. There's only a couple of handwritten books floating around about it, uh, which is, if something like that exists, I guess that's how it would be. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is interesting stuff. It's a lot of science-y stuff, though, yeah. which is kind of... You know, they still use a lot of science words like Xeno and plasma and uh, quantum and all that. I think they're just dressing it up, man. I need to see the proof. It's like with those uh, the ghost story shows when they be in the mansion, they got the thermal camera and all of that stuff. Like, oh, the degrees just went up two, two by two degrees. Like, man, let me let me see, bro. They never <laughs> catch nothing on camera, bro. Like, oh, did you see that orb right there? No, nigga, I saw that smudge on the lens. Catch something. That's what I want to see. Sick of this shit, man. Uh, just as a clothing, they a closing. They they gave me a little analogy with an ant, which makes more sense to me because it's, it's basically saying if you were to have a string uh-huh. uh, and an ant was moving across it, um, it would take a long time for them to walk across from like hand to hand. Right. But if you put your hands together, uh-huh. it's like he would be at his destination without the long trip, and that's how we travel, basically. There's also theories that we're, as we move through time, maybe we're jumping dimensions moment to moment. There's like a bunch of theories about it, but it's all interesting, all nerdy, and uh, if you read too much of it, I'm assuming you're going to get a headache. Cause I as headache. you should. I got a headache from that. <laughs> as you should. Dimension jumpers, guys. Nothing is real. Glitch in the Matrix. Car doesn't start. <laughs> I will say that I've, 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 I've thought a number of times that like about the Matrix and how the possibility of that being the reality because some Truly things so. are yeah. are so uh, unexplicably unexplainable mm-hmm. like when you have deja vu mm-hmm. and like you really had that feeling that you've been somewhere before but that's your first time mm-hmm. or either God is getting lazy or we're all cut from the same cloth because there are too many people that look alike. People now be sending me pictures of people that look like me, and I'm like, yo, this motherfucker do look like me. Right. See, the guy's using the same save-ass file. No, it seems like there's a default of, like, 20 humans, yeah. and then each one is customized. <laughs> 20 <laughs> humans per race. Right. And then, yeah, it's a little customization no, it's like, of it. It's, I've seen, like, Asian people who look like black people I knew. Like, oh, you really? Know, like, you've never seen that? Like, just, like, like the Asian version or, like, the white person version, like, they now, I haven't seen the, the other race version of me, right there, but I just feel like, man, like, like that, that, there could be some truth to that because of the, the way things happen, the way, you know, people are made and how astrology sets it up that a 
Pisces acts this way, Aries acts this way, Sagittarius acts this way, and it really kind of does line up sometimes with mm-hmm. the way a person is and their personality. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, it's, it's some of that is just it's too spooky to be overlooked mm-hmm. sometimes. And it's like, man, is it really like that much in the cosmos, or are That's we really I'm, in the I'm matrix? I'm scared of Saturn now. I, there's something going on with Saturn, <laughs> like. And I always thought those rings did look weird, so that'd be weird if that was like a machine that was built. It's just a gravitational pull, man. Huh? It's keeping the, the gravitational pull. Why doesn't nothing that else have it? Every planet is dicked. Why do we have air and Mars doesn't? But why is Pluto no longer a planet? Huh? Don't we always always have gravity? And I've always thought that the it looked solid enough to walk on. I know they're just a bunch of rocks, but nah. You I, never I, had a dream of like ice skating on the rings of Saturn? No. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Something's going on with Saturn. Ah, I never had that dream, but all right. <laughs> y'all, y'all watch out for Saturn, all right? All right. All right, for sure, man. I think we, uh, I think we've arrived. I think we gave the people enough today. I think, we, I think they got a healthy portion arrived. of the show. You know what I'm talking about? We have arrived. Yeah. I am. Uh, I'm about to go destroy my bathroom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out why on the next episode of Lunchtime Lottery. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, I didn't go through that for nothing. Yeah. We gotta come up with a name for our uh, Patreon subscribers, like in real life. Give us, give us some suggestions. If you yeah. made it this far, if you the, if you watch past the conspiracy corner, you deserve a say in this. Yes. What do you guys want to be called? The patrons, the dams, the scaries, the us, the internet, the DIYs. None of those are good. The scary berries. <laughs> Scare bears. Scare bears. Scare bears. <laughs> <I don't like laughs> it. Tell us if you hate scare bears. <laughs> but as always, I have been Patrick Cloud. And I'm to hear more. We'll see you next time on the next episode. Peace. All right, guys. Later.